this is an effect that is bothersome to create at times. And especially if you're actively working on an object, let's say we want to actually, I want to extrude this out and I want to change this around. Having this effect functioning with the outlines can be really, really iffy in a lot of situations. Today we're going to go over a very customizable, easy way to automatically generate this that doesn't involve post-processing. It's actually done through geometry nodes. This project file, or rather the one that we will have at the end of this tutorial, is linked down below in the description on my Patreon and my Gumroad, both of which will allow you to download it for free. So we're here in an empty project in Blender, and I'm going to tab into edit mode real quick, and I'm just going to add in a couple more meshes. So let's add in a monkey mesh, and let's also add in a cone and maybe a torus. It's very important to note that these are all within the same actual object, and that's because we're going to be using a geometry node, which will affect everything within this object. Of course, it's very easy to copy those over as a modifier onto other objects as well. So let's get started with that, right? So go over to the geometry node workspace, and we'll make a new geometry node that we will call cartoon lines. And here we have our input and our output. Our inputs are the four meshes in one object here that we've made. And our output at the moment is the exact same because it's just one line going from the input to the output. In between, we will be doing all of our processes to create whatever effect we want. For right now, that's going to involve firstly a scale element. This will scale all of the separate elements in your object. So that's every single mesh will be scaled individually around its origin. So if you preview that and we scale, we can see all of the meshes get scaled. The monkey is made out of three different meshes that aren't linked together. So it can be a little iffy to work with that. But luckily we're not going to be scaling things too much. So that shouldn't be a problem. Just be aware if you're doing this on your own objects that Geometry that's not physically linked to each other can do weird things like that sometimes. Anyway, after we scale the elements, so let's say we scale them up by a factor of 10% uh, or something like that, we will come off that and we will flip the faces. Very common and very old technique in 3D art to generate strokes is to add a second instance of the same mesh scale it up a little bit and flip the faces inside out. And what we're doing here is automating that process. Then we will set the material and we'll actually come off the original geometry here as well, because right now we only have the flipped version of the geometry available. We want to render both at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll come off here and also set the material for this one. And then we will join the geometry together. So after the set material for both of them, put them both into the join geometry, and then that goes into the group outputs. Now, going into our viewport shading here, so that we can actually see the materials, we're going to make some materials in a moment here. But before we do that, we want to have a couple of these things be variable, so that we can change them around for whatever different objects we want to apply this to. So first and foremost, the scale is going to be a input. Then we want to have this material, which will be called the outline material. We can change its name by coming over here, the group. And here we see all the inputs. So we can change the name here to line material. And then we also want to be able to influence the material of the object itself. And as far as the geometry node goes, that is pretty much all there is to it. So let's go over to our shading tab here and create a new material. We've got a default material. We'll just keep with that for the time being. And then we'll also add a second new material and we'll call this one lines. This material is simply going to be entirely black. The roughness is going to go up to one and the specularity is going to go down to zero. This way it effectively doesn't interact with light whatsoever. 
in the material properties here on the right hand side we're going to come down into the settings and we're going to enable back face culling that way we'll only see the front faces of the mesh and since we turned the mesh inside out that means that the majority of the newly scaled up mesh is not going to be visible because it's going to be all back faces except the things that are on the very edges there we can see a little bit of the original faces so we want to turn on back face culling then for the shadow mode we also don't want this thing to cast shadows on our original mesh because then we couldn't light the thing so we're going to change the shadows from opaque to being none and now when we go back into our layout mode, we can set in our modifier stack, our line material, to being lines. And as you can see, immediately, that seems to work. And our normal material can just be material. And there we can just change the color to whatever we want, as you usually would. And even in render mode, you'll be able to see that the lighting works perfectly. Things are getting lit just as you would expect, except we have a black outline around everything we can change the size of the black outline with the scale parameter that we have made we've got easy adjustable outlines and you can probably realize by now that usually when we would do this in the past and we would think okay we've got a object we copy the geometry we flip it inside out and we scale it up a little bit but then if you want to go back and edit the original mesh things get a little messy right because suddenly your outline mesh doesn't update with your original one but since it's entirely procedural now as i show you in the beginning of the video we can entirely edit this however we want and the outlines will automatically generate with it it's a very powerful tool and once again if you want to play around with it there's a link down below in the description to two sources where you can get this for free and look around and play around with it however much you like. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see.